Hello drummers and other creatures. As you can see, I've got my headphones in today and that means I'm going to be using the metronome. And uh, I'm going to introduce you to an idea that could possibly solve, I don't know, about 99% of your drumming problems, if not your problems in life in general. And uh, the thing we're going to do today is we're going to slow down. And slowing down, it's, it's such an important thing. Uh, I think that a lot of people, whether you're a beginner, what, whatever level you're at, I don't know what the other levels would be, beginner, intermediate and advanced, I guess, but it's all a bit meaningless, isn't it? But if you're a beginner, if you're just getting started out on the drums, uh, even if you're fairly well developed as a player, um, learning how to slow things down is a tremendous benefit and it's something that we don't do very well. And I find people struggling to learn things, learning grooves or fills or developing better articulation dynamics, all the, the bits and bobs. And what happens is we just try to do a thing. We're trying to play a particular pattern. We're trying to get the foot to do one thing, the hand to do this thing. We've watched some videos of some fancy schmancy person on Instagram going blah, 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 all over the place and we're going to try to do that or even we're just going to try to learn how to play the groove from a song that we like and we just sit down and we try to play it at the speed of the song and there's lots of advice that you see flying about oh just put some music on and play along or just learn the groove to this song and just do it kind of thing and I think just do it is not very useful advice in a lot of situations sometimes it's quite handy to just do it, but uh, it depends on whether you're ready to just do it with the particular thing you want to just do. So today, without further ado, I'm going to look at just slowing down. And I'm going to talk about slowing down and um, what I believe the benefits are a little bit, but first I would like you, uh, like, I would like to show you what I mean by slowing down. And in order to realistically slow down in order to do something at a slow tempo, I think it's pretty essential to use a metronome. And some of you will be going, ah, a metronome! And we come up with all these defensive uh, reasons not to use a metronome. Ah, oh, it's going to mess my natural timing, it'll make me like a robot. Um, I don't know, all sorts of, the, there are various reasons we don't like the metronome, it, it goes beep in an annoying way. Um, but we're going to use the metronome. I'm just going to do the standard metronome on quarters. The metronome is going to go one, two, three, four. And yes, there's all sorts of very clever other ways to use the metronome. And I, I like using the metronome in different ways. But just to be simple and straightforward, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have the metronome marking out quarter notes. Uh, so let's have a listen to what what it sounds like when I'm, I'm talking about playing slowly. You'll see what I'm about to do. My metronome is set to 40 beats per minute. Let's see if I can get it on. Now, what was that? It was horribly slow, that's what it was. And when I play this slowly, I'm, I'm still trying to make it sound like some sort of a groove, and I, I don't know if anybody's clever enough to know a song that's 40 BPM, I'm sure there's something out there. Um, but, you know, by and large, even like 60 feels pretty slow most of the time. And when we're down to 40, oh my God, there is so much space there. I'm just playing a very basic, Eighth note beat, as you can tell, I'm playing my bass on one and three, snare on two and four. I've got my hi-hat going on two and four as well. 
Uh, and I'm just using the brushes so I'm, I'm not getting too distracted with other things. So uh, I'm listening to get, um, listening, you know, that I'm making a, a nice light fluffy eighth note there. I'm trying to get a good old slap on uh, the two and four, my backbeat. So I'm, I'm not using the brushes obviously in a very jazzy way, um, but sort of more of a, a rock groove. And um, I'm just noticing everything, or I'm trying to notice everything. And um, you can't really notice everything all at once. So, so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm kind of doing, I suppose if you're into meditation and stuff like that, you'd call it a body scan. I'm sort of asking myself, how do I feel? How does my right hand feel? And I, I focus my attention there. How does my left hand feel? I focus my attention there, I notice literally how my limbs feel, how does my foot feel, how does my left foot feel, my right foot, uh, and I listen to each thing as well, but I'm, I'm moving my attention around my limbs, and then I can sort of generate a view of the whole sound of the kit as well. I notice that my bass drum is resonating nicely, and I had the thought, oh, I could bury the beater as well and get a different sound. Uh, I noticed that my uh, my left hand is is playing the uh, backbeat reasonably consistently, but it's not as even as I'd like. Again, same I noticed with the uh, right hand. Um, the left foot I didn't really pay that much attention to just now, but again, normally I would move my attention around. And very importantly, I noticed I'm rushing. Um, and, and this is one of the interesting things that you can really start paying attention to when you slow down. Um, I'm rushing at 40. My body is, you know, I'm like a dog going for a walk. Come on, let's go. My body doesn't want to just settle and accept that tempo. So even though I feel like, okay, I was, I was okay moving along at that tempo, I was very con conscious of, of, of pushing against it, pushing against that click and not being completely settled and, and accepting of that. Now, why is this useful? Um, well, I can only speculate or, well, I, I can only share my experience and opinion with you and you have to do your own research um, and see if this works for you as well. But one of the things I feel is when I play something at a very, very slow tempo like this, it actually sort of enlarges my perception of time. I can really hear the space between the notes and that's one of those kind of cliched ideas that gets talked about by musicians. It's not about what you play, it's also about the space between the notes that you play. And when you play at a very slow tempo, you become quite aware of that. And maybe not straight away. So if you decide to try playing a groove at 40 BPM, spend a bit of time with it. Don't just do it once for a few minutes and then go, oh, that guy's talking a load of crap. Um, if you think something sounds interesting in this idea and you've never done it before, try and practice like this for five minutes every day and just see if your sense of time kind of um, expands so that you, you really feel how long it takes to get from one click to the next and even one eighth to the next. Now, when I was playing just now, I wasn't really thinking about counting, I was just concentrating on my playing. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count to myself, I'm gonna count the eighth notes. And that can help me kind of fill in the time between those clicks that just, there's, there's just a painful wait between one click and the next at 40 BPM and ah, go down to 30, it's even crazier, but I'm not brave enough to do that on a, a video just yet, maybe later. But um, let's, see, let's see what happens, I'm gonna count. Now, uh, you might not notice what happens, maybe nothing will happen, let's, let's just see. I'm gonna go back to 40, I'm gonna play my eighth notes, I'm going to count along eighth notes. Okay, I'm going to start burying the beater now. I'm going to try and get a drier sound. Two and three and four and.
Okay, and I just sort of needing to concentrate on that extra element. I really felt how my body was a little bit out of balance. And again, uh, do you really want to be thinking about this? I think it's quite a good idea, actually, even, even just to sort of get a sense of it. Um, I'm fairly certain that whatever we're doing at slower tempos, our body is doing also at faster tempos. So if, if the idea of you know, having to concentrate a little bit more on uh, some extra control of my bass drum or whatever, if that extra thinking and awareness sort of made my system of balance a little bit off, then I'm pretty sure that by learning how to sort of relax and not react to the extra focus, not letting my body um, sort of worry too much about it by letting myself feel settled and comfortable with it uh, when I'm playing at faster speeds when I'm thinking about stuff I'll be a bit more balanced I think it's true again um, uh, a lot of people make proclamations this is the right thing to do always do this never do that and uh, I'm not sure about these things I've experimented with lots of different uh, tricks and techniques and I'm saying I think this is interesting, I think this works. I feel that doing these kind of exercises improved my just the presence with the drums, my balance, uh, again, my timing, my perception of timing. And then I'm inviting you to, if you think this is a cool idea, go and try it. If you th think this is a load of rubbish, no problem. Right, now, next. Uh, what can be really, really useful if you find it very difficult to settle into a tempo that, that's this slow is to count 16th notes instead of eighths or quarters. So if we're putting the click back on, we're going to go one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. And that really gives us um, quite a bit more rhythmic information to sort of hang our awareness on. Let's give that one a try. And again, I have no idea whether there'll be any perceptual difference in the way I'm playing, but I'm going to count sixteenths now just to demonstrate this idea to you. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Now, I don't honestly feel like I'm really nailing the time at all. Uh, it's bloody freezing in London and my, my hands are all cold and, you know, I've got the lights on and my camera going and uh, I'm a bit under pressure because I'm going to stick this out on the internet and maybe I think somebody's going to call me a wally for not playing Amazing Time or something like this. I don't know. Or whatever. Maybe I just I don't have the amazing time that you need to be able to play exactly right at 40. And... I try to let those thoughts go. And they, those thoughts come up in my head, blah, blah, blah. How is this going to look or whatever? And I try to let that go. And again, an exercise like this allows me the time to acknowledge I've got this little fellow chatting away in my head and that's fine. I have no problem with it. Um, sometimes the little chap is giving me some useful information, things to think about. And quite a lot of the time, it's just being a pain in the neck. Uh, and again, I can watch that and, and let it go. I'm trying to really relax into what I'm doing. And as I say, I think that that really helps us developing our sense of groove. Um, now, another thing is that it can help tremendously, just like learning patterns. If you sit down and do this exercise, if you go and play a basic groove at 40 BPM, you can sort of set your, your body's inner expectation of what sort of tempos you can play at to a lower level, meaning uh, at present, when you're trying to learn a new beat, um, you're, you're gonna go into it too fast very often. I mean, I've, I've taught hundreds of people and everybody does stuff too fast, I do stuff too fast. And by making yourself do these things really, really slowly, um, you're going to sort of 
again, make yourself a bit more aware. Sorry, I'm sounding like a real hippie now, but uh, you're going to make yourself really, really more aware of what a slow tempo is. And then, you know, when you're learning um, new beats or, or fills or whatever, it's not always ideal to do that with a metronome on, but being able to maybe tune yourself into a slower tempo by putting the metronome on a very slow tempo, just listening to it, maybe playing along a little bit, that will kind of bring the excitement of your body down a little bit so that you can then start practicing, say, a new pattern that you're working on. And the slower you practice things, the faster you're going to learn them, I think, maybe not in every single case, but very, very often it's the case. OK, now, another thing we can do then is think about, you know, how do I play some different bass drum patterns? And I could sort of torture myself by maybe adding some bass drums on the 16ths, on the E's and R's between uh, my eighth notes and just see how accurate that sounds and, and again see how my body reacts to that little negotiation between the right hand and the right foot in my case. Now, I, I put all my attention on my right foot on my bass drum, and then I realized, oh my god, I'm really playing the thing very, very loud, because I wanted to, to focus on that. So, ooh, let's, let's relax that a little bit. And so on. I can listen to the alignment between the right foot and my right hand and my left hand and so on. Now, we've got all of that happening. Let's throw a fill in there just to make things, again, a little bit more challenging. I'll stay with the snare for now, but we're going to then go from my right hand playing eighth notes to playing some sixteenths. So at this tempo, I can afford to do any kind of shenanigans. But again, I'm going to listen to myself. I'm going to listen to the accuracy of what I play in terms of the metronome clicks, in terms of the internal time I'm feeling with the 16ths in between uh, those clicks. And uh, again, no, just notice the general sense of my body. You know, do I do I tense up a little bit if I if I think something isn't going right, or you know, am I anticipating? Uh, things in a way that my body's reacting to. And I'm trying to find, again, a state of sort of calm and equilibrium and uh, just relaxing into this, hearing the space, letting my foot do some uh, 16th note shenanigans, and I'm going to play, let's say, um, four bars with a fill on the fourth bar. 3E and a 4E and a.
totally lost the plot at the beginning there. I'm going so slowly. I'm playing in two bar phrases. Um, then I think I sorted it out. But yeah, oh, what a mess. I have to deal with that. I have to deal with the, the fact that I don't really feel quite connected to the click when I'm playing at 40 BPM. Again, oh, 30, ooh, maybe later. Now, one more thing you can do to really kind of get your perception in there a little bit is to deliberately try and drag the time or even to, to push the time a little bit. But when I say drag the time, what I mean is to, to sort of see how slowly you can make yourself play without losing your timing with the click, and maybe even losing the timing. So, so you try and kind of slow yourself down, slow it down and just see how that feels. And then you can speed it up. But you're not trying to like run off again like an excited dog, which seems to be the metaphor for today. Um, and you're not trying to sort of slouch back as well until you're like, Ugh lying on the floor, but you're just going to pull back on the time and you're going to push the time. You're going to slow down against the click so that it feels like you're still kind of playing along with it, but you're slowing down and then you can pick it up again. You can speed up and then you can try and settle yourself back onto the quarter notes, get back into strict time. And again, this is a splendid exercise to do to try and increase your perception of doing, you know, what's being called uh, playing ahead of the beat or playing behind the beat. And there are drummers that do this. Uh, I'm not really sure how conscious some of the drummers are where you, you listen to someone, oh, this so-and-so plays behind the beat, so-and-so plays ahead of the beat. I'm at a loss, I can't think of any um, examples right now. But, um, oh, famously plays ahead of the beat or behind the beat. But there are, you know, that's said. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna deliberately drop behind, and then we're gonna go ahead and just see what happens. And I'm gonna do it blatantly enough. And when you, when you try this out, if you're mad enough to, um, that's what I'd like you to try and do. Just see how far you can slow down without completely uh, going behind, and then speed up a little bit without completely rushing ahead. Let's see what, that, what happens when I'm doing it. Two. What I'm really noticing is how little attention I can pay to my bass drum foot while I'm doing all of this, because I, I keep thinking, oh, blimey, it's a bit loud. But um, you get the idea now. Now, if you're just watching me do that, you're just like, come on, you're just, you're just playing out of time. And yes, that's kind of what I'm doing, right? But I'm doing it in, in a way that I set my intention to do it. So I'm not playing out of time just due to bad timing, but I'm, I'm saying to myself, right, Slow down now, see what that feels like. Speed up a bit, see what that feels like. And as I say, and I think this applies to most of us, although I suppose I should just speak for myself, there is a tendency to rush a little bit at whatever tempo. I think if, if, if drummers have any issues with timing, more often than not, there is a tendency to speed up. But you know, maybe for you, you put a metronome on or you're playing with your band and you, you feel like you're slowing down. There's various, um, various things that can happen there. 
But anyway, that's it. So really, um, and I hope you don't mind me doing a slightly more philosophical video, the uh, invitation here is for you to sit and play at 40 BPM with a metronome. You can play quarter notes if you know any of the other clever things, the next level metronome stuff. Um, I might uh, do some of that as well at some point. Um, it's not rocket science really, but just an invitation. Sit and do things really slowly. Listen to how your body feels. Notice little tensions that might come up. Notice your sense of balance. Notice what happens when you pay attention to different parts of the drum kit, to your right hand playing the hi-hat, your left hand playing the snare or whatever. Uh, notice how easy or challenging it is to control the different components of the kit. There's a whole bunch of other stuff we could do with this, which, as I say, I might look at at some point, but for today, I think that will do. Thank you very much if you stayed all the way to the end, because I'm not really sure what will happen with this video. It's just free form. But if you have watched to the end, I really am very grateful to you and invite you to comment. Uh, is this uh, giving you some food for thought or do you feel resentful that you've wasted your time? I'm happy to hear either way. And if you decided to go away and practice at 40 BPM and try some stuff out at that tempo, let me know what you think of the whole thing. Was it a waste of time uh, doing that? Or do you feel like you start to perceive time differently or you, you, you can see how you might benefit from the whole process? Thank you very much for watching. I'm overdoing that one. Please bear in mind that I'm a teacher and I can teach you directly. So if you think I might have some uh, useful advice to give you, you can get in touch with me directly. The details are in the description box below. Uh, also, it's very important that you thumbs up, like, subscribe, smash the bell and all that good YouTube algorithm stuff to help my channel be seen and also just so that you'll be aware of any future videos I do. You might find something that's perfectly interesting for you. If not, in the comments again, tell me what you want to hear. Now, I've been talking enough. I think it's time for you to go off and practice.